It's a mouse trap. You set it off. That bar would cut you in two. Now, I've told you before, don't get ahead of me! I didn't know. It's all right. Oh, you've got a lot to learn, my girl. Hmm. Fresh cheese, that is. It's called cheddar. Mother's favourite. But you've got nothing to spring it with. Never mind. Just stand by. Father! I know what I'm doing. Just watch that bar. And if it starts to move, shout. But if you touch the cheese... You... Just watch the bar. That's not for beginners. A rock cake, a nice piece of fringe, a grape, two sultanas, very nice nut. Oh, thank you, Loopy. You're very kind. And a piece of biscuit, rich tea. Oh, rich tea. Very thoughtful. Well, one must help those less fortunate than oneself. <laughs> I mean, we are sisters, aren't we? You wouldn't think so to look at us, would you? But then, I married a harpsichord and you married a clock. What's that got to do with it? I'm not saying that Pod isn't good-hearted. Then what are you saying? Nothing. Lucy? It's only just that, well, that he must realise that none of us are getting any younger and I think he should give up the borrowing and let my two dear darling sons do it. Ditchley and Ulrich are the most skillful borrowers that have ever been. I mean, you've only got to see my store. Well, let me tell you something, Loopy. Potter's forgotten more about borrowing than your two boys will ever know. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, evening, Loopy. Where's Arietti? Uh, she's just gone to see little Tina. Has Pod been out borrowing? Yes, Loopy, with Arietti. Suppose that they were seen. We'd have to emigrate. We'd all have to emigrate. If Pod wants to take Arietti borrowing. Daughters should help their mothers, not try to be boys. Why you let her outside is completely beyond my condensation. I'm only thankful for my precious Eggletina. She wouldn't dream of going outside. Please, Arietti. Please take me with you. I'd love to, Eggletina. I really would. But there's no way your parents will let you. I know. But I haven't been out since... Yes, but that was years ago. Oh, it's such a shame, because there aren't any cats here. I've been outside lots of times, and I've never seen one. That wouldn't convince Mother. It's just not fair. You can go out whenever you like. Only because I promised I'd never talk to another human being. I'm very careful the old ladies never see me. Oh, I'd be just as careful. You'll be a to one day. I'm sure you will. It'll be such fun. You'll be able to watch and listen and I'll show you everything. The garden's full of flowers and the old ladies are so funny. You'll love it outside, you really will. So, Miss Butter won't melt in your mouth. Eggletina will love it outside, will she? You're a wicked, deceitful girl. No, Mother, she was just... Coming in here, doing your best, doing your worst, I should say. Persuading our precious Eggletina to disobey us. But I didn't say that at all. What I, 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 I know what you said. We heard it, didn't we, Hendreary? Oh, we did, my dear. We did indeed. She didn't. Eggletina. What I said, I, I know said. what you said, and you are a wicked, wicked girl. Wicked. Wicked! <laughs> I've got to admit, they'd be, they'd been very kind. It's just... It's, it's just Loopy's manner. It's so... I 
Dinner. Bossy. I don't know how Hendreary stands it. All right, we'll tea her. I expect that's why her darling boys live on their own. Yes, Ditchley and Ulrich. Got to be good borrowers, though. That storeroom's full. Yes, I know. I only wish... What? Well, we weren't all living on top of one another. Oh, back in the old house, you never stopped saying how much you wanted company. I know, Pod. But there's company and... company. What'd you borrow that for? I don't know. We should, dear. I didn't think the cream teas were as good as last year's, did you, Hilda? No, I didn't, dear. But I was very impressed with Mr. Huggins' rhubarb. Oh, I don't know how he does it. <laughs> oh, Madam Butterfly is beginning to drop. Oh, off you come. Oh, look, Hilda. That poor Pelagonium is dying of thirst. No need to drown it, dear. That'll do for now. I'll go and put a kettle on. That'll be nice. You buy any pegs, Mrs? No, I do not. Do you mind removing your foot? I can't. It's attached to me leg. <laughs> Where's the boy? That's none of your business. Oh, it is, you know. Because I believe he knows where they are. And who, may I ask, are they? You know as well as I do, Missy. The little ones. Would you care for a cup of tea? Mr. Mildeye. I was sorry to hear your mistress had kicked the bucket. She'd been bedridden for years. I thought it was a merciful release. Who for? So, what's going to happen to the house? Well, I expect it'll be sold. What will you do? Won't he? The boy will still spend his school holidays here. He's coming on Saturday. Is he now? I want you to watch him. See what he does. I'll pay you. You leave it to me, Mrs. I'll keep an eye on him. Good. Follow him everywhere. You know you can trust me. Oh, I know how much I can trust you. 
dollars. Yes. You lead me to him. I know you will. Then I'll be rich. We will. Are you telling me how to bring up my own daughter? Well, it's quite obvious that someone's got to, isn't it, Hindria? I didn't want to come here. Oh, no, of course And not. if you want to know, I'd be quite happy if I never set eyes on you again. Oh. Did you hear that? My own sister, did you hear what she Just said? Just because you bring us things, you think you can say what you like. We're the poor relations. We have to do what we're told. I don't have to stay and listen to this. God, will you know the way out? You ungrateful creature! <gasps> Hendreary! Oh, I'm sick and tired of Loopy's airs and graces. I didn't ask Eggletina, she asked me. She was a rain pipe just like me before she married what's his name. Why shouldn't you ask Eggletina? But I didn't. There, you see? You can't stay here, Pod. But what choice do we have? Live off the land like we did before at the mercy of birds, rats and weasels? Oh, yes. Don't interrupt. I mean, if it hadn't been for Spiller, we'd have starved. That's true. Live and let live, eh? You've put Loopy in her place, you'll never forget it. Now you've got to swallow your pride and patch things up before supper. <laughs> never! And I said a lot of things I shouldn't have done, Loopy. And I'm very sorry. Dear homily. It was just a silly misunderstanding. We must let bygones be bygones, mustn't we? One big happy family. Do sit down. Oh, thank you. We're expecting Ditchley and Ilric. They always bring us something very special. Well, actually, we've got something extra special for you. Oh. Oh, my goodness, Pod, what a wonderful piece of cheese. It's cheddar. She's such a help in the kitchen. <laughs> Sparrow's egg omelette. Did you like the soup? Very nice. Carrot tie and a wild garlic. My very own recipe. Very tasty. <laughs> Ariete, soup, tasty. Yes. Ditchley and Elric even bring us fish from the stream. Ah, our dear boys are the best borrowers in the whole world. We do our best, Mother. Ditchley, darling! Oh! oh. <laughs> Elric, oh! <laughs> It's so wonderful to have you back home. Oh, it's wonderful to be back home. <laughs> but I see we have... Visitors. Well, perhaps you should introduce us. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. You're Uncle Pod. Yes, that's right. A and, and you're... Aunt Homily. Well, how very nice to meet you again after such a long time. I... I haven't seen you two since Arietti was born. Arietti? That's you, isn't it? They're living with us now. Oh, yeah? They were seen. Seen? Were they, Mother? Yes. Oh, well, it, it happens sometimes, doesn't it? I'll bound to, eh? Mm. And what little extra have you bought for our supper? Well, it's not too much as it happens, Mother. Well, Borrowings are a bit thin on the ground, but we managed to get... Quite a nice little piece of cheese. From the pantry. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. Where did that come from? Your Uncle Pod borrowed it. Oh, did he? Oh, that is nice, isn't it? Very impressive. Where'd you find it? You should have seen him. Father was wonderful. He lifted it right off a mouse trap. Well, I think I was a bit lucky, as a matter of fact. Yes, he must have been. Not like when you got seen. No, not like that. Happened to poor old Dad as well, didn't it? 
being seen. <laughs> yeah, you got dusted on the mantelpiece, didn't you, Dad? <laughs> Looks like uh, you ought to be dusted again. <laughs> it's just a quick spring clean. In the air. I reckon he's got them off. Got him off, balls. You knocking for That's a long face, Eggy. Aren't you pleased to see us? Of course I am. Of course you are. Of course you are. Do you think he needs a polish now? A bit of beeswax would be good for him, mate. <laughs> 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 did it deliberately, it shows up. Father was wonderful. Mm, lifted it right off a mouse. So what? Well, yeah, he's showing off. This is our house. He's got to learn that. Yeah, well, we're going to teach him. Of course we are. Show the old has-been what real borrowing is. That's right. And it won't just be a lump of cheese. No. you an hour ago. The train was late. It's a long walk from the station. It's under a mile. It's good exercise. You came straight here. Yes, I did. Wipe your feet. Wipe your feet. Close the door. Close the door. I'd like to see some real borrowings, Uncle Pod. Very much indeed, Leslie. Looks as if you've done very well indeed. Oh, do you think so? This isn't nothing special, is it? Quite normal for us, I'd say. Oh, yes. Quite normal. What have you got? Oh, do you, do you want to start, Elric? No, after you, Ditch. OK. Nightlight. Oh. Thimble. Matches. Oh. Chocolate. String. Rice. More string. Tin tacks. Oh. And an elastic band. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that that chocolate. Mm. Collar stud. So, oh. Shirt buttons. Oh. Cheese. Cotton wool. Stuff for dresses. Oh. A Brussels sprout. Oh. More stuff for dresses. Oh. And a walnut. Oh. Oh. And now for something a little bit special. Scissor. Oh. How's that for borrowing? But that's, um. That's. That's. That's something really special, Ditchley. Where did you get that? Come on, tell me. Be quiet, Harriet. Tea? We found it, didn't we, Ulrich? Yeah. Where? I don't know. Just lying about somewhere. You took it from a spiller, didn't you? Spiller? Are you accusing us of stealing from another borrower? That's not very nice, is it? What's the matter with her? Father, that was yours, you know it was, and then it was Spiller's. One half scissor looks much like another. But, Sit Father... Sit down, Arietti. What's this bit of string? He may just have lost it. Not Spiller. Something's happened to him, I know it has. Spiller will be all right, he'll turn up. Tight, yes. That's it. Pod? Yes? There's no water. Well, there must be water. You're probably not doing it right. These things are always a bit stiff. See, I'm not doing it wrong. Mm. Borrowing shoes. What is it serious? I don't know, it could be.
The doctors say it could take several months to mend. Oh, as much as that? The whole bones knit slowly, I'm afraid. Must have been a terrible shock to you. Oh, it was. Hilda's been my companion since Fred died. I should be completely lost if I were here on my own. Oh, yes, yes, of course you would. Now, the gas people have been, and the water board, so everything's turned off. Much safer. Yes. And if you could pop in from time to time, I would be most grateful. Here's the key. Oh, thank you. Now, I've cleared out the pantry because of the mice, but I'd be so pleased if you would have the jam. Oh, how very kind. Bless, Bless you. Bless you. When will you get to Bogner? Uh, six something, I believe. My daughter's meeting the train. Oh, just hope I've remembered everything. Been seen. It's not the point. No one to borrow from. There's Loopy's storeroom. Loopy's storeroom will soon be empty with the number of people she's got to feed. Nine. Exactly. Anyway, don't forget it's their storeroom. Well, when will we have to go? I don't know. Find a way out first. Sleep. I hardly know the woman. Well, I suppose it's a nice enough garden, but it ought to be the amount of time they spend in it. The cottage itself is very dilapidated. The gate needs a good paint. Is that the place in Hexwood Lane? Yes, Ivy Cottage. And I'm supposed to look after it for a few jars of blackberry jam. Butter? his version of it anyway. <laughs>
Serves him right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Escape, won't he, Mother?
What on earth are you doing here? I was just about to rescue you. Oh, thanks very much. If I'd known, I'd have waited. You're going to make me a fortune, you are. <laughs> I can see it now. Mild eyes, midgets. Admission, one shilling. Calls for a drink, this does. Morning, Mr. Mild Eye. Morning, Mrs. Bit early for that, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's for me back. Stuff. I ought to know. I'll make it. Did you follow the boy this morning? Yeah. I followed him. Where did he go? Well? Uh, round them old badger sets up by Parkins Wood. Oh. What happened then? Well, he had a look round. Then headed back toward Furbank. And what did you do? Well, I came back here. You're lying. <laughs> What's in that bag? Nothing. Open it, then. What's the point of opening it? There's nothing in it. <laughs> You've caught them, haven't you? They were in that badger set. And you smoked them out and you weren't going to tell me you were going to keep them for yourself. I only got one of them. I was going to give you a surprise. Honest, I was. One? Yeah, he was a lively little beggar, too. Took quite a lot of catching. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you. Come on, where are you? He's gone! Gone? Yeah, look! You fool! Stupid! Now he'll go straight back and warn the others. They'll all have gone by now. You've lost them! Oh, if only you'd come to me instead of trying to cheat. This would never have happened! Oh. Here! You still owe me half a crown! Rubbish! Oh, witch! Villa, slow down a bit. <laughs> oh. So, where have you been all this time? Out and about. Oh. Anywhere particular? Here and there. I don't know why I bother. Little Fordham. Little Fordham. Where's that? Oh, shouldn't I ask? Down river. I see. I'll take you there if you like. Safe as houses there. Eh? Like what? It's safer than houses, Spiller. Human being. Running. Quick. <laughs> Don't believe it. George! George! Down here! Mr. Pod. Mr. Clock. Oh, yes. Clock. Sorry. How's Arietti and Mrs. Clock? Oh, we're all fine, thank you. At least ways we were. How did you get out of Maldai's bag? How did you know about that? Well, I've just come from his camp. Get in my pocket. What? Well, get in my pocket. I'll take you back to the cottage. They'll still be looking for you. They? Mrs. Driver and Maldai. They formed a sort of plot. Come on, come on, Spiller. Shall I wait? No, we won't be leaving today anyway. There's too many things to be thinking about. 
Can't I see our Airty? Not now, George. When are you going to leave? Sometime in the morning. Oh, will you leave the window open a touch? Very important. Can I come back then? I suppose so. Where are you going? I don't know. Oh. See you tomorrow then. Right, Willa. Come on, they'll be sick with worry. Homily, I warned you what would happen. I told Pod not to go borrowing. He's not gone borrowing. The house is empty. He's gone to find a way out. And that's what we've got to do. Because we're going to rescue him, aren't we, Mother? Oh, but that's ridiculous. You'll both get caught. They'll be fine. We'll go with him, Mother. Well, we did. Of course we will. Did you? I don't think you should. It's a terrible risk. I know it is, but I'll do anything to get him back. But you won't have to. Pod! Oh, 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 Pod! Oh, oh, what a relief for us all. Welcome home, Pod. Welcome home. Well done, Uncle. You must have had a lucky escape. Well done, I. You did it. And that's a fact. Mm. <laughs> we thought the worst had happened, didn't we, Hendreary? We, we, we did, my dear. We really did. How did you do it? Spiller found me. Spiller? Mm. Where is he? He's outside somewhere. I want to know everything, right from the very beginning. We all do. Indeed, we do. I suppose a cup of tea's out of the question. <laughs> oh, 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 pod. Spiller? 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 Oh, Spiller, you made me jump. Well, you might say hello. Suppose I might. Why don't you come in? That boy brought us here. What boy? You don't mean George? That's him. Oh, it must be the school holidays. Is he still here? No. Oh, I wish I'd seen him. Mild Eye's out to get you. Mild Eye? For where? You must see, we've got to emigrate. Spiller knows a place. Spiller? Could all go there. You've brought us nothing but trouble. I suppose it's our fault the human being fell off the ladder. I didn't say that. What I said was... Yes, we know what you said, Loopy. And, and, and I'm sure there's some truth in it, but we can't stay in an empty cottage. Especially if Mild Eye thinks we're still here. I know what you're saying, Pod, but I'm not leaving. None of us are. Are we, Hendreary? Well, Loopy, I think that. That's settled then. You can go if you want to, Pod, but we'll stick it out here. My darling boys have got enough to keep us going for a few weeks. Can't live without water, though, can you? Excuse me. Been turned off, hasn't it? No water. Washing, drinking, cleaning. Where's it going to come from? Dishley, Ilrig. No. But you don't have to worry. There's still plenty of water in the cottage. Isn't there, Homley? Oh, yes. Well, where is it, then? In the tank. Tank. The tank. Yes. There's what they call a tank in the roof, full of water. Oh. <laughs> in the roof. Now, who told you that one? My staff, don't it? Yeah, what would be the point of keeping it up there? <laughs> <laughs> For the bath. The bath. You know what a bath is, don't you? Well, the time has come for me to turn on a tap. I'm surprised you didn't know that, Ditchley. Now, that's what I call a real borrower.
Did you see Spiller then? Yeah. I wish you wouldn't keep doing that. Look what I've uh, found. <laughs> well done. <laughs> we might need your help, Spiller. That's really take it out of me these days. I don't know why. egg balled. He slid down the back there and shot right the way along the bath <laughs> and ended up at the plug hole. <laughs> How did he get out? Father and I threw the plug down and he climbed up the chain. Oh, that's a bit of luck. They've left the plug in. They do that, you know, to stop the spiders climbing up the pipe. Why do spiders do that? I don't know. It's one of life's great mysteries. Like, where do human beings get their food from? Right. Oh. Here we are. The tap. Right, you take that one, Spiller. I'll take this one. If you push, I'll pull. You ready? All right, now. Oh. We're never gonna shift this. Yes, we will. It's just a bit stiff, that's all. You ready? Now. Oh. I was fine. Yeah, of course you were. What happens when the bath's full? Well, that thing stops it overflowing. Hmm. Isn't that a long way to come for water? No. Not if they find a nice large knot hole in this floor. There's bound to be one. Be right on their doorstep then. <laughs> Ditch and Ulrich something to do. And we won't owe them anything, will we? Dear Homily, you know you're welcome to stay. It's very kind of you, Loopy, but I'd rather not. Thanks all the same. I'm sure we can manage somehow. Well, I don't think all of us could, Loopy. Goodbye. You will take care. I will. Good luck, Pod. Thank you. You're the one we have to thank for the water. We'll keep our fingers crossed for you, Uncle Pod, won't we, Ori? Oh, we certainly will. Good luck. Good borrowing. Good riddance. <laughs> They've been gone for hours. Something's happened to them, I know it has. No, it hasn't. You don't know it hasn't. Well, you don't know it has. Well, I don't like sitting here. It's so exposed. Mother, the house is empty. I know it is, but it doesn't feel empty. Any luck? None at all. I reckon the wind must have jammed the window shut. We've looked everywhere. Well, couldn't we climb the chimney? We'd never survive the soot. Anyway, how could we get off the roof? Well, we can't go back. I couldn't face Loopy. We've got to. We've got to stay here. There is no way out. Yes, there is. Little Tina. 
I'll show you. I take old Tina. Lead the way. Tina, we've already looked in here. It's under that thing. A drain. A drain? Ditchley and Ulrich use it. It comes out by the stream. It's one of their secrets. Then why didn't they tell us? They just wouldn't. Everything's a secret with them. They do a lot of bad things. They steal from other borrowers. They stole from Spiller. That's how they get so much. And they're bullies. Shut the door on you. I thought so. How could they? Come with us. I can't. Mother needs me. She doesn't know what ditch she's really like. Break her heart if she knew. Oh, you poor girl. I'd better be getting back. I got Tina. You're a very, very brave girl. Goodbye. Hello. Eggy. down there. It's probably slime. Show sure, it's soap. Well, I'm not wading through that. It smells awful. Oh, come on. It's not deep. I did. Somebody had to. That was silly, Eggy. Very silly. But I'm not going to be cross with you this time. Because it's given me a funny idea. Not one of your very funny ideas, did you? You'll laugh like a drain. Right, you must. It's not deep. Ah. Oh. 
I've been past this drain many times. This comes out near my kettle. How long will it take? Um, a couple of hours. Let's get started. Two days, by the way. What is it? Look forward. Huh. Trouble is, my boat only holds one. I was looking for that. You're all right. Of course I'm all right. A rain pipe. I'm not frightened a bit of water. Oh, you drowned. So did I for a moment. I wasn't expecting it all at once like that. What happened? Well, I reckon somebody pulled the plug out of the bath. Well, who'd do that? Uh. Oh, no. Yeah, it'd be Ditchley's idea of a joke. Not much of a joke if we drowned. Well, they wouldn't think of that. Well, where are we? On the other side of the stream. 
Are you sure you're all right? Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> I quite enjoyed it, really, apart from it being unexpected. Now, where are the other borrowing bags? Uh, they're over there. <laughs> ah. The matches will be ruined just when we wanted a fire. Oh, if we spread everything out, the sun will dry it in no time. I bought a change of clothes wrapped up in some Macintosh. I think they're in this one. In case of rain. <laughs> rain? <laughs> this one's as dry as a bone. Feel. Ooh. <laughs> oh, we've got nothing for Spiller. Don't want nothing. You'll catch your death of cold. I won't catch anything, except perhaps a couple of field mice. Well, when the matches are dry, we can have a fire. And a meal, if I'm lucky. I'm not eating a field mouse. Neither am I. Not a whole one, anyway. Oh, come on, Arietti. Watch out for nettles. Dry as a stick inside, no rust, not a hole to be seen. Don't know why they threw it away. Are you coming? Careful. Nice and snug, isn't it? Hmm. And warm. It gets too hot sometimes. The spout's all stuffed up with mud. You get cold at night, though. Especially in winter. Uh, excuse my asking, Spiller, but... How far is this little Fordham place? Depends. On, on what? How do you get there? By boat. Two days. Walking. About nine. Nine? Maybe more. Right, then we'll have to find a boat big enough to take all of us. Look, couldn't we find somewhere near? I mean, what's so special about Little Fordham? You'll see. What if I don't like it there? You will. Pod, I Come really think... It's somewhere that Spiller knows. We don't know anywhere. It'll be an adventure. I don't want an adventure. I want a home like the one I had at Furbank. Spiller, how long would it take you to get to Furbank? We're going to Little Fordham. Yes, we are, and we're going by boat. See, if Spiller could get to Furbank, then maybe George could find someone who could use as a boat and Spiller could sail it back here. Oh, Pot. I don't know how you'd do it. I'm not going to. Spiller is, aren't you, Spiller? Might as well. Great. When are we going? You, you're not going anywhere. Why not? I want to see George. Don't be silly. Why can't I? Because you'd never keep up. <sighs> exactly. Yes, I would. I'm hungry. Where are you going? Hunting. Oh, dear. It's going to be field mouse. Hmm. It's a bit like rabbit. Please, Father, please. You're not going, Arietti, and that is flat. Mother would be sick with worry, wouldn't you, Amelie? Yes, Pod, I would. <clears throat> if it wasn't Spiller. It is Spiller. I know. Are you saying... Well, you're the one who taught her borrowing. Yes, but well, this is different. Are you saying you'd let her go? Yes, Pod, I am. Oh, Mother. Spiller's lived in the wild all his life. He's used to hiding. She'll be safe with him. Maybe she would, but I ain't taken her. Well, that settles it. <laughs> that doesn't settle it. 
You can't sail a boat by yourself. You'll need help. She's right, Spiller. Amelie? Well, she is. Isn't she? Then you let me come. Looks like I'll have to. Father? Well, it doesn't seem to matter what I think. Oh, yes, it does, Pot. You must have the final say. Now, you look after her mind. <coughs> Thank you. Don't let her out of your sight. No running off on your own. Now, take care. We will. Won't we, Spiller? She likes the outdoors. I know she does. Can't think why. I'm not one for insects, never have been. Now, don't worry. Makes a change, doesn't it, me doing the worrying? Well, don't worry, I'll be worrying too. <laughs> Know the way, do you? Come on, sit down. I'm fine. You're limping. Sit down. Probably got a blister. No, I haven't. We should get moving before dark. Well, don't stop on my account. I can see in the dark. Maybe you can. But there are things in the dark that can see you better. Well, I'm not frightened of them. You wouldn't have time to be frightened. Tell me about Little Fordham. Why? Because I want to know. Come on. She likes Spiller. I'd like to be like him. Oh, it's more than that, Pod. I don't know much about these outdoor types. Race apart, my father used to say. Still, he's a clever young fellow, Spiller. Oh, he is that. Doesn't need human beings. Well, not so much as some. I'm brave. That's yes, saved our lives. More than once. Yes, you're right. He knows his stuff. He's down to earth. Have you ever thought, Pod, that, well, almost without noticing it, Harriet is nearly old enough to get married. Don't be silly. Do you want to slow down? Of course not. I'm just as quick as you are. Yeah? Yeah. I'll prove it to you. I'll race you to that hedge. OK. I'll give you a head start. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go. 
Burbank. The other side of the wood. Are you sure? I wouldn't say if I wasn't. Sorry. You did all right today. Kept up well. I wouldn't have said I could if I couldn't. Well, he won't bother us. He's eating already today. How do you know? I just do, that's all. Did you hear something? No. I did. No, it was nothing. How do you know? I just do, that's all. Now, be sure you clear all these away when you've finished. I don't want them under my feet. Thank you very much. George? 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 Arietti! Spiller! Carry on playing. I was worried I was never going to see you again. I couldn't come to the cottage. Miss Stryver won't let me out of the garden. Why have you come back here? We need your help. What sort of help? We need a boat. Well, I haven't got one. It doesn't have to be a boat, as long as we can use it as a boat, all four of us. How did you get out of the cottage? Down the drain. Down the drain? Yes. Now, can you help us? Was it smelly? Yes, George, very smelly. And very quick. Must have been disgusting. George! Can't you think of something we can use? What for? A boat! Oh, yes. Mrs. Driver! George? Yes, Mrs. Driver? Time for lunch. Coming! To be leftovers again. I'll be back. Don't forget the boat. Poor George. Twenty years in her service, and what am I? Nothing more than a caretaker. And what should she leave me? A few pieces of jet and a locket, which is probably pinchbeck. And what do I get for looking after you in the holidays? A mere pittance, that's all. And it's not as though you were easy to look after. Are you listening to me? Yes, Mrs. Stryver. Don't talk with your mouth full. What if you don't find nothing? Oh, he will. I know he will. We can trust George. <laughs> Make sure that cutter is dry and then you can clean the French windows. How anyone can expect me to take care of a house this size without help, I don't know. I really don't know. I was going to go fishing this afternoon. Oh, were you indeed? Well, I'm afraid that's quite out of the question. You've far too much to do in the house. I suppose there was an accident. Suppose you were to fall in and be drowned. What would happen to me? I'd be blamed. And then I'd probably be dismissed without a reference. And that would all be your fault. I'm going to beat the mats. No, they fail. What's that? Nothing. You mumble, George. I cannot bear boys who mumble. Now get a pail and clean those windows. 
Then you can wash the kitchen floor. It's wonderful, George. I'm afraid it's more of a barge than a boat. You better be getting back. Don't forget, we're going to Little Fordham. Little Fordham. I'll remember. Good luck. Uh, bon voyage. What? That's French for have a good trip. Oh. Goodbye, George. I feel safer down here. I saw a wasp fly under the handle just now. Have some biscuit. No. Do you suppose they're on their way back now? Yes, with any luck. Well, it can't be them already. Hello, Uncle Bod. Oh, normally. Ditchley. And Ulrich. Where's Arietti? Spell. Never mind, they're not here. Well, we can see that, can't we, Ulrich? Yeah. I see you've uh, found Spiller's kettle. We cleaned him out. Took my lot. Now, you listen to me. No, Mark, I'm tired of listening to you, Uncle Bod. I listened to you the other night. Now it's your turn to listen to me. All right, I'm listening. What have you got to say? Nothing. <laughs> They will. We'll teach them a lesson. Show him his boss. Yeah. Come on.
hot. It's clouding up. It could be a storm. <laughs> what do we do if there is? Just pull in and wait till it's over. You don't have to worry about him. My voice won't hurt you. There's a bit of wind. It's behind us. That's good. Bad boat. We've got George to thank for that. How long do you think we'll be here? Dunno. Maybe all day. Well, we won't go hungry. He's really quite a borrower, George is.
Father! Father, it's me! Where are you? They couldn't be. They couldn't be, could they? Oh, it's them! They're here! Hello, Miss Clock. You're still ticking away, are we? And how are you, Spiller? You all right? Lost any good borrowings recently? Bad comparison, have you? What do you mean? That's why I expect they're very pleased to see you, aren't they? I gave you quite a warm welcome, I should be. So where have you moved the kettle to, then? Yeah, there's no use trying to hide it from us. We'll find it. They floated off in the storm. Yeah, but they got out loud, didn't they? Of course they did. They couldn't. Shut up. They couldn't? What do you mean? It was his idea. What was? Well, we thought you'd be back to let them out. It was a joke. I said not to do it, Ditch. I did. I no, said... No, you didn't. You got the stick to jam the lid on. But they wouldn't be able to breathe. Yes, they would. Through the spout. The spouts were stuffed up with mud. Oh. You're lying. He's not. I didn't know. It's not my fault, is it? I didn't know there was going to be a storm, did I? It was just a joke, that's all. Everyone likes a joke, don't they? Yes, they do! But not your jokes, Ditchley. You're safe, you're safe! Yes, yes, quite safe. <laughs> And there must be something wrong with you, this thing. It's hard enough and dangerous enough being a borrower without having half wits like you to put up with. But that's because you think you're better than anyone else, don't you? You, you just go along with it, don't you? You old Rick, you just go along with it. I'd say you've forgotten everything you've ever learnt about being borrowers. Look, it was just a joke, right? No, it's not all right. Because your jokes aren't jokes. They're nasty, spiteful little tricks. You don't care about anyone or what happens to them. I shouldn't think you've ever helped anybody in your life. Borrowers share and borrowers care. <laughs> What lesson you've forgotten, if you ever knew it in the first place. Oh, and when we were going down the drain, you pulled the plug out of the bath? There's something else you forgot. Yeah, what was that? Thanks to your very funny joke, you used up all the water. It couldn't have done. Oh, yes, it could. It was turned off, remember? So thanks to your very, very funny joke, it's all gone. Not a drop left in the whole house. Still, I expect your father and mother will think it's very funny when they find there's no water left for washing. They'll laugh themselves stupid when there's none to be had for cooking. And they'll be near hysterical when there's nothing to drink anymore. I wonder what they'll think of their dear, darling, very funny little boys then. You know, Pod, I've never heard you say so much. Not all in one go. <laughs> yes? Mrs. Driver? Yes? I'm Muriel Menzies. 
a distant relative of George Mays. The Mays wrote to me from India and... It, well, perhaps I'd better come inside and explain. Oh, all right. But you'll have to come through to the kitchen. Most of the rooms were shut up years ago. You see, Mrs. Driver, according to his mother's letter, George isn't very happy here. How would she know? Because he wrote from school. Oh, he did, did he? So his parents think that uh, it would be better for everyone if from now on he were to spend his holidays with me. I see. After all, it hardly seems fair that you should have to look after him. Well... Quite frankly, Mrs. Menzies. Uh, miss. Hmm. Miss. I'll be glad to see the back of him. That boy's been nothing but trouble since he got here. And I have to tell you, he's a thief. George! It's no business of mine, of course. But there must have been schools in India he could go to. Coming all this way, they just wanted to get rid of him, if you ask me. And I can't say I blame them. Well, I, I, I think it's more a question of his health, Mrs. Driver. Apparently, George isn't very strong, and the Indian climate... Ah, the climate. There's always some excuse, isn't there? Another biscuit? Well, I'm, I'm sure his parents want to do the best they can for him. Mrs. Driver? Oh, George. Uh, this is Miss Menzies. Hello, George. How do you do, Miss Menzies? I'm a second cousin of your mother's, George, and she's asked me to look after you when you're not in school. Would you like that? Gosh, would I? <clears throat> um, yes, that'd be very nice, thank you. Uh, would it be convenient for me to come for him on Friday? Well, I don't see why not. Do you live locally? Uh, yes, I do. Fordham. Fordham? Not Little Fordham? Oh, no, George. Oh, no, no, no. No, I couldn't live in Little Fordham. I've ever done it. it. Usually takes some time. Oh. Well, what's the matter? Are we sinking? Uh, it take a lot to sink this. What is it? Branches and stuff. It looks like we're stuck. Oh, I knew it was going too well. Well, if we're stuck, we just have to get unstuck. We can't stay around to be seen from that bridge. Come on, this is going to need all of us. This time, my old eye, caught you red-handed. It ain't like what you think, Mr. Babcock, sir. Just having a little midnight paddle, are we? That looks like poaching to me. Look, we could both be very rich, sir. And that sounds like bribery. But there are little people in the water here, sir. And that is definitely drunkenness. Now, you just switch that torch off and come on out of it. You may never have a chance like this again, sir. I know I won't. Been after you for years. You in resisting arrest as well, are you? Now you just get to the bank and wait there till I come. And don't you try running off because I know where you live. Go on. Go on. Go on. 
Schau näher. What do you think? Oh, Spiller. Oh, Pod. Is it empty? They all are. No other borrowers? No. Vine Cottage. Come and have a look. Toadstools. I know. So how are we going to get upstairs? Well, uh, we could knock a hole in the ceiling, couldn't you, Pod? 
and then build a proper staircase. Put down a good, solid floor. Build a proper fireplace so we could dry the place out. And in no time at all, it could be quite wonderful. Couldn't it, Pod? Yes. Nice little hinges from cigar boxes. Oh, Mr. Pot, it's absolutely splendid. It's just like St. Edmund's. Yeah. Here's the vicar. I, I haven't made him quite as fat as the Reverend Winkley, but uh, <laughs> otherwise he's... he's just uh, the same. I thought he could uh, stand just outside the porch, like this. He's very lifelike, you know. I can make cottages and that sort of thing, but I can't make people. There weren't any people in Little Fordham until you came. They uh, brought the place to life, you might say. Oh, Mr. Potter. Hardly no, I mean, my poor efforts. I mean it. I, I did make a little trap for the signal box, but he wasn't very good, was he? No. His uh, head was too big. He was like a, a tomato with legs. Oh. <laughs> well, I think uh, we've earned ourselves a cup of tea, don't you? Well, yes, I do, but I'm... I just want I'll, I'll to... I'll go and put the kettle on. Are you real? I'm not imagining you, am I? Can you talk? No. Such a pretty dress. Thank you. You can talk. But I promised my father I wouldn't. Oh dear, and now I've made you break your promise. It's all right, it's not your fault. How did you know I was real? Because I knew you weren't one of mine. I've made all the people in Little Fordham, you see. Although I've got most of them at home at the moment. I'm getting them ready for Saturday. You're so tiny. What happens on Saturday? Uh, Mr. Pot opens Little Fordham to visitors. Have you just arrived? Visitors? For the Railway Benevolent Fund. Are there many of you? You mean human beings come to look at the village? Uh, Saturdays and Sundays, ten to four, weather permitting. Oh, this is so exciting. Here you go. Uh, will you be staying in the village? I'm... I'm not sure. Oh, please do. Please, please stay. You'll be quite safe. You can trust me. Really, you can. I'm coming! Goodbye. Mm. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't go off like that. What's happening? <laughs> They've climbed in through the window to make a hole through the floor. So we're staying? Of course we're staying. Why do you think we came? This wood's from a cigar box. You get nice little hinges from a cigar box. It'll make two nice bedrooms up there. Nice and warm under the thatch. <laughs> no spiders, are there? No, only dead ones. <laughs> What are you standing like that for? Go on. He's the one who built all this.
When you built the fireplace and laid the floor... After I've built the staircase... It'll be perfect. It's time I was off. What do you mean? Must you go, Spiller? Tonight. Where? Will you be needing the boat? No, I suppose not. You can take it. Watch out for visitors. Visitors? What visitors? Other borrowers? Perhaps he means human beings. Oh, what would human beings want to come here for? To look at the village. Well, why would they want to do that? Well, I don't know. Because it's small. To them, I mean. I mean, they like things like that, don't they? Like dolls' houses and toy soldiers and train sets. Don't mention train sets to me. Spiller says it normally stops at the station every time it goes round. I'm surprised you weren't sick the time you were on it. If what you say is right about visitors, Ariete. Oh, Pod, no. We can't stay here to be seen again. Miss Spiller said visitors. They wouldn't be here all the time. Ariete's right. Probably only in the morning or at weekends. And not at night. And only weather permitting. What? I mean, not when it's raining or in the winter. Well, I still don't like the sound we of it. We must just do what Spiller says and be careful. And get curtains. <laughs> Mind if I borrow this? Thank you very much. Call round if you need it back. So my trunks at school. Oh yes, of course. Well, we better be off. I must get back to my work. Work? Yes, I design picture books for young children and Christmas cards. Oh, really? My cousin Leonard used to make ashtrays out of bottle tops until he was committed. Oh dear, how sad. Well, goodbye, George. Goodbye, Miss Strother. Try not to make too much of a nuisance of yourself. Goodbye, Miss Menzies. I can't say as I envy you. Oh, we'll get along fine, won't we, George? You must come over one day and see Little Fordham. Little Fordham is a model village. Oh, model village. Goodbye, Mrs. Dreyfer. And thank you for looking after George. Thank you. 
got eight of them. Oh, I wish your father was here. He's borrowing curtains in the village store. Phil Drabble introduces a special round of One Man and His Dog in which the young handlers take over. That's on BBC Two now. had a catapult. What? Get out of my village. Do you hear? I'll never let me oh, see you here no, again. No, 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 uh, Mr. Pot. Not George. He stopped them. Uh, this is George May. He's a relative of mine from India. Oh, see, I'm so sorry. Well done, lad. Well done. Have they done much damage? Well, I'm afraid the milkman will need repainting. And Mr. Plod's lost his head. Just try and keep going. Yes, yes. Oh. I just stood there. Wanted to move. But I just couldn't. That's horrible. And, and then, quick as anything, this, this other boy just knocked up his arm and... And... Uh, the funny thing was, he looked just like George. George? Yes. Well, mind you, it, it, it all happened so quickly, I, and I didn't want to hang about to be seen again. Oh, it couldn't no. have been George. Why not? No. I told him we were going to Little Fordham. Ariete! I'll be careful. You're not going outside. But, Mother, I, I just... don't know how you can think of it. Your father just missed death by inches, and we don't know, not for certain, that it was George. Must be because he knows we're here. Don't argue. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I know you want to see him. He's been very good to us, a good friend, that's George. We owe him a lot. Mm. My life for a start. And if it was him, you'll come back. Got a church. I can soon knock up a church, Mabel. We could have a cathedral. Why not? They're bigger than churches. A lot bigger. 
much more impressive. With stained glass? He hasn't got stained glass. He hasn't got a police station either. No, he hasn't. Nor a fire station. Well, we've got a fire station. It's not half the size of our bally hoggy. Nowhere near. So why do people come here rather than to us? I don't know, Sidney. There's no amenities here at all. Are you in need of one? No, not at the moment. And you can't get anything to eat. I mean, we do set teas. There's no balloons for the kiddies. Oh, that reminds me. I don't think we charged enough for them balloons last year. All for them windmills come to that. Better make it ninepence. Oh, shilling more like. Oh, look. Oh, Sydney. It's those little people. They're so lifelike. And ours just aren't. That's what does it. Oh, you're right, Sydney. But things like that have to be specially made. It's very expensive. Look what that firm charged to lay our railway line. Yes, wicked that was. Pop gets people to work for nothing. That's why his little people look so good. It's different. That's why the visitors come in. So we have to find something different for Bally Hoggin. Something special. Special? Excuse me. I couldn't help overhearing what you just said. Have you ever heard talk of the borrowers? And they're all gone. If that man who built all this turns up, freeze. Yes. Just pretend you're one of those things. You know, one of those what's-your-names. Sorry, Eddie Borrowed. Smells nice. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Oh. oh! Yes, that's a real find. Um, it'll make hummocks for us while I build the beds. Oh, I'm not sleeping in a hummock. You've slept in a boot and a kettle, you can sleep in a hummock. Good morning, Mr. Pot. Morning. I hope you don't mind, but George asked if he could come along to help. Oh, fine. Morning, Mr. Pot. Yes, it is. You know, I'm sure I cut tiles for this roof. Shall I go look for them? That's strange. Uh, just there, they were. Mr. Oh, Pot. Well, never mind. I'll uh, just have to cut some more. And I still got the roof to finish. Mr. Pot. Hmm? Can you keep a secret? Oh, yes, I think so. There are some real little people in the village. Are there? 
Only three, I think. Uh, father, mother and daughter. Nice. I've, uh, I've spoken to one of them. Good. That's not quite straight. I said they'd be quite safe here, but I thought you ought to know. I mean, after all, Little Fordham is your village. Hmm. I'm not sure what they are exactly. I mean, according to their size. Size, yes. A uh, couple of coats would do it. You'd think they were fairies, wouldn't you? Oh, I hope I haven't frightened them off. Oh, I didn't think so. Yeah. You see, I really do want to see her again. Oh, good. It fits perfectly. not there anymore. I'm staying here. In Little Fordham? Not Little Fordham. Fordham. It's the same, only bigger. So no more Mrs. Driver? No. Mum and Dad fixed it. So does that mean you'll be staying here every school holiday? I think so. Oh, but George, that's wonderful. Where are you staying? Are you Mother's waiting for that water. Off you go. Hello, George. Uh, if that was you yesterday. Oh, well, thank you. It's all right. Um, how's Mrs. Clock? Well, she's very well. Thank you. Busy at the moment because we've just moved, you see. Whereabouts are you? So, I'd better be getting back. Oh, yes. Well, so did I. I'm glad you found somewhere safe. Safe? the lid down, it'd make a lovely stove. Yeah, that fits. Arietti? Arietti? What? You were miles away. I wish I was. I don't know. I really don't. We've got this lovely house that could have been made for us. And lots of things to do to make it nice. And borrowing's on the doorstep, so to speak. And you just sit there in a big heap wishing you were somewhere else. Why wouldn't you let me talk to George? You did talk to him. Now pass me those tacks, will you? Yes, but not for very long. Long enough. It's just not safe. Safe? That's all you think about. That's just a minute, my girl. Well, it is. There's more to life than just being safe. Being safe doesn't worry Spiller, does it? Well, Spiller's different. No, he's not. And it doesn't stop Father, either. It wasn't safe to take the cheese from the mousetrap, but you still did it. I knew what I was doing. Yes, well, maybe I do, too. Let her go. And there's another. Are you? Down here. Oh, 
I, I thought you'd gone. Oh, no, we're staying. In, in the village? Can I really trust you? Oh, yes, absolutely. And Mr. Pot. All right, then. Vine Cottage. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, how terribly exciting. What's your name? Arietti. Arietti. Oh, so strange. I, I was beginning to feel that I... Is there anything you need? Oh, no, nothing. Thank you. Um, I haven't told my parents about you. They'd be angry if they knew. You see, borrowers aren't supposed to talk to human beings. Borrowers? Yes. That's what we are. Borrowers. Because we borrow things. Well, perhaps if you tell me what you need, I, I, I could get it for you and I could leave it somewhere. Somewhere near Vine Cottage, perhaps, and you could just come along and um, uh, borrow it. I'm afraid I, I did try to tell Mr. Port about you, but I don't think he really took it in. And I'm sure he wouldn't disturb you. But you won't tell anyone else, though, will you? Oh, I promise. Well, I'd better be getting back. I'll come here the same time tomorrow. Goodbye, Miss Menzies. Goodbye. Arietti. in the bedroom. Well, go up and open the window. Well, it might come down in a minute. It's getting very cross. Well, it's not my fault. <laughs> oh! Clumsy great thing, dropping its pollen everywhere. Why doesn't it go out the door? Well, the truth doesn't understand about doors. Well, you'll have to show it. Go away! Go away! Oh, what do you mean? Show it! Well, if you run out, it'll probably chase you. Yes, you probably would, but I don't want it to. You're not frightened of a bee, are you? No. Oh, look, I'm sick of this. Will you please leave? There. See what happens when you say please? Absolutely slaughtered me. <laughs> and you've really never played before. I haven't. <laughs> honest. I've always thought croquet was a soppy game. Oh. But it's good, isn't it? Do you want some lemonade? Oh, yes, please. <sighs> <sighs> Lovely evening. Are you going round to Mr. Potts tomorrow? Thank oh, you. Oh, I expect so. There's always something to do. Do you want to come? If he wouldn't mind. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't. You like Little Fordham, don't you? I think it's great. You can imagine all kinds of things. What things? Like people living in it. Well, uh, I suppose they're could be little people like that. It could be, couldn't there? Do you mean that, George? Why shouldn't there be? Well, why haven't we seen them? Perhaps they keep themselves hidden. Why? Perhaps they aren't allowed to talk to human beings. Well, how do they live? They can borrow things. George? What? You know, don't you? So do you. Oh, George! Oh. I'm sorry I said what I did. It's all right. It's always best to come out with what's bothering you. Isn't it, Pod? Mm, yes. It's just that sometimes, only sometimes, I want to be, well... Like Spiller. <laughs> You're betwixt and between. Well, it's time we all went to bed. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Let's 
perfectly well. If we can, in that hummock. I don't know how I let her talk me into this. The woman's demented. But if they're real, Sidney... How can they be? My mother said she saw one once. Your mother saw a lot of things. Especially when she'd been at the gym. Oh, see, see anything? No. Come on. Hard. Mm. Are you asleep? Yes. Neither am I. I hope the fire's all right. Oh, hummocks. now, Mr. Platter. Well, I don't know what to say, Mrs. Driver. I thought you were a bit funny in the head, but... Sidney! Well, I did, Mabel. But after that smoke... Got your net. Do they bite? Let's get them. I think. It was all so quick. Like an earthquake. Uh, where are we? Some sort of box. Well, where's the box? I, I, can't, I can't move it. It's, it feels like cardboard. Listen. Pot. I've got one of my feelings. So have I. She calls them. I call them a gold mine. They won't eat while we're here. Oh, I wouldn't pick it up, Sidney. You might catch something. We'll make the front of their house with plate glass. Good and strong with a slot so as it can be raised for cleaning. Oh. Nowhere for them to hide. Can't have people asking for their money back. With nice, bright clothes. Yes, and we'll place the cage. House, Sidney. House? In a bed of cement. In case they start burrowing. How long it'll take to make? 
Well, it's got to be finished by the time we open up. Oh, you'll never do it, Sidney. I once built a rabbit hut in an afternoon. Oh, I can do it. We'll make a fortune, Mabel. <laughs> Pity we got to share it with that driver woman. Well, she did put us on to them. Five days. Five days? I better start working. You better had. Bye-bye. Days, he said. If we don't get out of here before then, we're done for. Oh, God. It's going to put us in a cage. A glass-fronted cage. But we will escape, won't we? We must. That's the spirit. Now, let's go and look at this food. Well, this is cold rice pudding. I think this is mince. What's this black thing? I think it's a bit of a pickled walnut. This is just milk. Well, we won't starve. Oh, no. They mean to look after us. We're going to be on show. Don't. Well, the first thing is to eat. Once we've got something inside us, we'll feel better. And then we're going to go over every inch of this room from floor to ceiling. Well, what do you fancy? out of the bottom. What with? We'll find something. Something to cut through a wooden door an inch and a half thick. It's going to take a lot longer than five days. That's the med they caught, is it? Oh, I can't bear to look at it. It's a thing they make their clothes on. Look! And here's another. There's lots. Pod! Only need three to make a grapple. Look for bits of thread. That's her sewing machine. Yes. That means there must be whole reels of thread somewhere. And scissors and razor blades and all kinds of things. Things are looking more hopeful. <laughs>
Christ's sake! had much breakfast, Sidney. It'll take them time to settle in. They've had a bit of the mince. Do you think they're asleep? Lying doggo, more like. I should leave the milk, Mabel. Milk? Yes. Give us plenty of warning. They must never find us outside the box. And the more frightened they think we are, the better. I won't have to pretend. Neither will I. Now you join the threads together. And not the short one, I'll need that. And I'll carry on bending these pins. Well, don't strain yourself, Pod. No, I can manage. Here, look at this. Floorboard's broken. I reckon we could get down there. Well, where would that get us? Above the ceiling of the room below. Then we could make a hole in it and climb down on a button thread ladder. Be a bedroom, most probably. And empty during the day. That's right. It's long a table throw is, so stand back.
I knew he could do it. So did I, really. He's a living marvel, your father. What can you see, father? Pod. Hominy, you were right. What is the point? Thought we could get through the window, the catches, and right down. But what good would it do? There's no way down, and that's it. We could build a balloon. We could build a balloon. A balloon. A hot air balloon. Oh, for goodness sake, Arietti. We could. I'll show you. Come and see. Please. Hot air balloons for the home constructor. Tells you all about them, how to make them, what you need, everything. Step by step. People go for miles and miles in them. You see, hot air rises, so if you can heat the air in the canopy, you can go up with it. Please, Father, let me read it to you all of it, and then you'll see. It's a waste of time. It's not. I know it's not. Oh, don't give in, please, Father. You never have before. Well, all right. But you're going to have to read it nice and slowly so we can take it all in. Oh, thank you. The following article sets out the principles of hot air balloon. The table of calculations will enable you to achieve an accurate balance. See figs 10 and 12. Figs? Figs. Figs. Be securely fixed above the pilot's head so that the skirt keeps the wind off the flame. See fig 18. Yes, got that. Right, um, weight disposal and equilibrium. Oh, my goodness me. What's that? It's to do with getting a sort of balance. Well, why doesn't it say so? Well, it does. Well, it will do in a minute. That's how I know what it means. <sighs> well, you realise when you get to the end, you're going to have to go through all this again. Oh, no, Pot, no. I don't mind. Well, I'm not saying it's possible, but it might be. I suppose. She said she'd meet me on Monday, down by the stream. Perhaps she couldn't get away. No, something's wrong. I know it is. I won't hurt you! You, you could stay in the village. You needn't be frightened. I'll leave you alone. I, I could lay something on for you. I could lay on the water and the electric light. And... Uh, Hello, Miss Mildred. I, I was just... Oh, there's no need to explain, Mr. Pott. Really? All right. L let's say we've found all the stuff to make the camp company. Canopy. And canopy. Canopy. And we've sewn all the bits together using these patterns here. And we've made the skirt thing and, and we've built the gond... Gondola. Gondola. We could use the fruit basket for that. Yes, yes, we could. Let's, let's say we got that far. And what do we use as a burner? You said there was a candle up there on the table and matches. Yes, you're absolutely right. I've forgotten that. There is. Well, what do we make the canopy with? 
What about that box of silk bits? We're going to need more than that. Oh, just a minute. What? I'll show you. Strip the stuff off and hide the frame. They'll never miss it. Of course not. We'll get it down after supper. Now, we'd better get back before Sidney and Mabel come up. It's getting late. Right. It's scrambled egg tonight. Good for you. Do you think they understand, Sidney? No. How could they? Think how small their brains are. Small. How do you know it? Three days. Come on, let's get some food and get started. What about that green bit? opening day. Oh. oh, it's a treat. Oh, Sidney. Well, that's it then. Time's up.
It's not going to work. I told you it would. It is. It is going to work. It is. It is. Oh, God. <laughs> They tried to escape. Oh, no. We kept them in the loft. In a cage, I hope. In a shoebox. Well, that won't hold them. They were still in it this morning when I took up their breakfast. Oh, really? Well, I'm very pleased to hear it, I must say. It's getting stronger. Yes. Get in. Get in. Come on. Listen, just pull on that rope and it'll guide you through the window. You'll be fine. Father, what, what are you talking about? It won't take the three of us. We're too heavy for it. Listen, they're coming. I'll be fine here. They won't find me. Just oh, don't pull on the rope. Sake. Remember, just don't look down. Oh, oh. oh, we seem to be staying up. Yes. But for how long and where to? Wherever the wind carries us. Oh, just listen to her pot. She doesn't care. Hit those trees. We're going down. Hold on, hold on. Really, Arietti? Five o'clock.
Where have you been? Locked in an attic. If I'd known, I'd have rescued you. Thank you very much. Look at all this. When did you get here? I moored up last night. Well, it's all different. Tables, chairs, carpets. Smells human beings. I reckon they've done this for you. There are proper beds upstairs. And there's this blue thing with wires coming out of it in the shed. Look. Oh, turn it off, turn it off! So they knew we were here. George must have told them. Yeah. No. I told them. I told Miss Menzies. Miss who? Menzies. After everything we've been through. But George knew. He saw Father, and if he hadn't... I know they'll leave us alone. I know they will. But they haven't, have they? Look at this place. Made it into a doll's house. And sooner or later, we'll, we'll be seen by one of those visitors, bound to. And then word will get out. We'd be no better off than we were with Sidney and Mabel. And who's to say they, they won't hunt us again? But they're not like Sidney and Mabel. They're different. They're like George. Why didn't you tell me? I was going to. They love us, Father. They really love us. When I was a lad, I had a beetle called Percy. I loved him. Kept him under a tea strainer. <laughs> I really looked after him. Fat as butter he grew. But he wasn't happy. And I knew he wasn't happy. So I let him go. See? And he sees too. Wouldn't catch him living in a house like this now, would you? No. We're going, aren't we? we have to. There's an old water mill. One human and plenty to eat. It's downstream. When are you sailing? Dawn. We'll be there. Come on, bed. Real stairs. Yeti. In a minute. Dear George, we are leaving Vine Cottage. I can't, I can't leave tell you where, where we are going. And I hope that one day you will understand why. Please thank Miss Menzies and Mr. Pot for everything. And give them my very best wishes. Your friend always, Arietti.
As I see it, life, I mean, as we live it, come this thing or that thing, there's always some way to manage. That's what I reckon, anyhow. There'll be a new series of The Borrowers next year. And there's a new Sunday afternoon drama for children starting in two weeks, set against the early days of cinema in Britain, Smokescreen.